Becoming faster on a tennis court and being able to run down more of your opponent's shots can be as simple as practicing a perfectly timed split step. Now, real quick, I want to say a big thank you to Let's Play Tennis for letting me use this video. Make sure you subscribe to their awesome channel. I've put their link in the description below. So here's Yannick Sinner hitting volleys, obviously. His back is to us. And I want to show you his split step. Now, first, let's just look at what a split step is. It's a hop. Watch him hop. See that move right there? You want to make that hop. So you should be hopping on return of serves when you're rallying, when you're going to the net. You, you always want to split step. And I want to talk about why. But first, let's talk about the timing of this move. Most players are under the assumption that you're supposed to land and look at his feet. You want to land that split step as the opponent is striking the ball. But that's not what happens. You actually want to be in the air as your opponent hits. Here's the opponent hitting the ball. By the way, look at his non-hitting hand. That's what I teach you to wave to the opponent where you move this hand out of the way. And when at contact, somebody standing behind you should be able to see your non-hitting hand over the non-hitting shoulder. That is absolute perfection. Good job by this guy. But notice the ball is being struck and Sinner is off the ground. He is not touching the ground as the ball is being hit. And he actually lands the split step after the opponent hits the ball. Let's talk about why. What he is doing by being in the air as the opponent hits is he is synchronizing his brain and when he reacts to the ball with his reaction time to when his feet hit the ground. He's trying to synchronize his brain processing where the ball is going with when his feet hit the ground. The average human being has a 0.25 reaction time for a visual cue, right? So one-fourth of a second is how long it takes the average person to react to a visual cue, to something visual, all right? Now, Yannick Sinner is no average human being. So he's a professional athlete. I'm going to knock this down to 0.2 seconds, right? So he's down to one-fifth of a second. So what we can use is a timer, to actually check this. Let's have a timer see how long it takes for Yannick to react to where the ball is going. 0 0.06 seconds, six hundredths of a second. Yannick has no idea where this ball is going. Still has no idea. 0 0.1 seconds, no chance that he knows where this ball is going. One point, uh, 0.13, no chance still. Now we're getting close here. 0 0.16. All of a sudden, Yannick Sinner, you can see his right elbow kind of tuck into his body because this ball is coming at him and he kind of has to jam himself to get to this ball. Notice that when the clock gets to point two or around point two, that's when he reacts to the ball. Guess what also happens at point two? Watch his feet. Watch his feet. That's when he actually compresses down onto the balls of his feet and he's stretching his calves, he's stretching his hamstrings and his quads and everything is just getting ready to explode as he's going to either move out of the way of this ball or let's say the ball goes over here in order to get to that ball. Whether you are returning serve, rallying, you're at the net, the proper timing of a split step is to jump before they hit, be in the air as they hit and then land after. Let's watch this one. Let's see it. Watch his legs. Yeah, look at his calves, right? Co like completely engaged. He is jumping up at this point. There's the contact. And look, he's in the air as the ball is being struck. Let's put a timer down again. Let's see when he reacts to this ball. He hasn't moved. He hasn't moved. He hasn't moved. He has no idea where this ball is going. And now all of a sudden he does. That is when, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. That is when his feet hit the ground. And that's when you start seeing him move and put his racket into position. His body, when it reacts, that's when his body is going to move. When his brain reacts, that's when his body is going to move. You don't want to land as your opponent hits because then you're going to have to sit there for 0 0.2, possibly 0.25 seconds with a very stationary lower body. Jump prior be in the air as they hit and land after and you will react so much faster to all of your opponent's shots. Now, if you're looking for people in your local area to play matches against or practice with, or if you want to find a coach who's close to you in your local area who's going to be able to help you with your game, then use my link in the description for Play Your Court. And it's playyourcourt.com slash two-minute tennis. When you use my link to sign up, you get 50% off.
So please go out and film yourself and see if you are timing your split step correctly. If you are not, you can think of it this way, that when your opponent hits the ball, there's like an electric shock that zaps the court for the four milliseconds that the ball is touching their racket. So you want to be off the ground as they hit the ball to make sure that you're not getting zapped. You use a properly timed split step and there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.